Hi, this is Kai Kobayashi. I'm from the Colorado Springs, Colorado. And this is a reconstruction of the link ligament. Drew Toronto and the crew from Boston looked at this particular technique. I'm going to make a little longer incision here to show the approach. Here's the extensor retinaculum. You can release this in a step cut fashion if you want. Fourth dorsal compartment. I usually like to try to get between the second and fourth dorsal compartment. The dorsal intercarpal ligament inserts radially on the distal pole of the scaphoid and then ulnarly, oftentimes you take the PIN right there. Make sure you preserve the dorsal radiocarpal ligament. There's the ligament tear there. We're going to use the dorsal intercarpal ligament to reconstruct this. Here's the dorsal intercarpal ligament right here. I like to take a pretty good strip of this. Oftentimes you'll see that when you pull on it, it really takes that scaphoid and takes it out of flexion. And this will be kind of the reduction maneuver. We'll put a pin here, pin in the lunate. Just want to make sure that it kind of stays out of the way, area where you want to put your K-wires. This seal will reduce it. Now this, this is pretty well reduced already, but that typically reduces the uh, scaphoid to the lunate. And then we'll uh, add our fixation here radially. I usually make a small incision here. You don't have to, but I think it protects the superficial branch of the radial nerve. Here you can see the uh, styloid there. Some people will do a styloidectomy, but here's the scaphoid right here in the base. And I'll typically put quite a few K wires, one from the scaphoid to the lunate, one from the scaphoid to the capitate. Then we go back to the dorsal aspect of the wrist. These two K wires here we can remove. Your joints are reduced now. Here's the dorsal intercarpal ligament again. Here's our reduced scaphoid to lunate. You can barely see that space there. And then we're gonna put our anchor right here. And I also like to sew into this here too. We get a little more stability to prevent the scaphoid from rotating if you can sew into the dorsal radiocarpal ligament. This is a true shot, why not shallow? This will penetrate 10 millimeters. So we're gonna put that right on the dorsal aspect of the lunate right here. Make sure you're not in the mid-carpal joint. Technique is to uh, drill the pilot hole and then you completely remove the uh, drill bit, mallet right to that stop, and then you deploy it with the single lever trigger. We'll take the sutures out, we'll set it. As you can see here, that's solid in there. So that's a very nice fixation. Pull out strength is incredible. So this here, you want to make sure good tension across there. And we'll bring a locking suture right there. We'll come back down on the other side. Plenty of good bites in here. So that's kind of locked in there now. We'll see the ligament just right into there. And I'll put one more so that it just exit perfectly through the dorsal aspect here. Get good locking interface of the sutures. Once you get your ligament anchored into the lunate, I like to uh, pass this through the dorsal radiocarpal ligament. It acts as an another constraint to scaphoid flexion and then we'll tie this down as well. Go ahead and cut that. So this is the dorsal intercarpal ligament reconstruction for a scaphalunate ligament tear. You can see that the anchor is into the lunate. We have locking whip stitches into the dorsal intercarpal ligament, further augmented with sutures into the dorsal radiocarpal ligament here, and you can further augment this too with other sutures of your choice. And then uh, close the capsule and extensor retinaculum. We just sew this back together and complete it.